that same intensity may have led us to the verge of finding the God particle. So why do we keep trying so hard to collect particles together? For one reason, we know there's something missing. Something we should have been able to see long ago. So we keep at it. When two particles collide, how do you create new particles? There should be a particle that explains why stuff has mass, why we exist. Some call it the God particle. It's known as the Higgs boson, and though its existence was predicted in the 1960s, no one has yet to see it. To understand why it has to be there, you need to understand this. What particle physics really is, is quantum field theory. Not so long ago, it was thought that everything that exists now, all particles, existed from the moment time began. Not true. It's the fields that exist. Particles annihilate and get created. So the things that exist now maybe were created by particles in the early universe, but they certainly didn't exist in the early universe. Take, for example, an electron. The electron field permeates the universe, and an electron is a vibration of that field. You have to imagine it like the surface of a lake, and uh, you throw a pebble in, and you get some waves. Now imagine the waves kind of stay around where they are. They don't spread out. That little wave thing is an electron. Every time you throw a pebble in, you get another electron. There is a lake for every type of particle. The constant is energy. E equals mc squared says that the energy then is equal to the energy now. It could be in the form of mass, or it could be in the form of things moving around. And that's it. Quantum field theory. Fields fill space, and fields are the existence of particles. Physicists know that there is a field responsible for mass. Therefore, today we think that masses are generated because there is a Higgs particle. As the universe cooled, the Higgs field condensed, making it more difficult to move through space due to what we interpret as mass. And the God particle is the search for this Higgs particle, a way in which we can give mass to, to particles. As particles move through space, their interaction with the Higgs field is proportional to their mass. And one of the goals of the LHC is to finally find these things. To find the Higgs would answer a whole bunch of questions but to not find it would have even more impact. Well, most physicists are a little uncomfortable with the fact that we haven't seen any, any so far. If there is no Higgs, who is generating the mass? Would be a great mystery. Why? Because it's the best possible explanation we have for why we exist the way we do. So how will they find the Higgs? Particle signatures. Signatures of new physics. This is a cloud chamber where the naked eye can actually see traces or signatures of fundamental particles. Originally built for examining clouds, this relatively simple box filled with dry ice and gas allows us to visualize subatomic particles. Amazing. When an ionizing particle goes through the cloud chamber, it again has only single atoms that are ionized and you don't see those. But the mist inside the cloud chamber condenses on them, which you can then photograph, because it gets big enough to photograph. Signatures tangible proof that they exist. There's an electron. Look, that's a photon. Like the cloud chamber, spotting the Higgs particle will be a process of looking at signatures left behind by other particles in the LHC, or maybe even somewhere else. This is the Tevatron. It's also just outside Geneva, Geneva, Illinois. At one-fourth the size of the LHC, it is the largest, most powerful collider presently in operation. So we're in the Tevatron Tunnel, a four-mile-long ring, uh, the final stage of the accelerator at Fermi Lab. The Tevatron was critical to the development of the superconducting magnets that would later become the backbone of the LHC. Tevatron is like a time machine because it can produce particles at the beginning of the universe. The physicists here have been searching for the Higgs particle for 25 years. And some say they may find it before the LHC turns on. Will they find the interesting Higgs particle before LHC is on? They have a tiny chance. But once the LHC turns on, the primary attention of all physics, including that of the Tevatron, will be at the LHC. This room is called Remote Operation Center. So that this is uh, where uh, we can monitor what's happening the other side of globe at CERN. A remote operation center across the globe to look, 
for the God Particle. Sir Isaac Newton would be pleased. Isaac Newton was arguably the greatest physicist who ever lived. Imagine a time before modern science when there is a guy who could predict things about nature. This looks like magic to the average person. It was really the birth of what we call all of science. It was proposing something and not just qualitatively, but quantitatively predicting a result. In terms of our detector, Newton's laws has a huge effect. Right? We have to actually build a detector that's structurally sound and stands up to gravity. Newtonian way of thought, approaching the world with a question, why does this work? I don't know, and I'm not going to assume I know. I'm going to try to answer the question and test to see if my answer is correct. That way of discovering the world is how we live today. It's a Newtonian world, but it's also a quantum mechanical world. It is, in fact, a quantum mechanical world, and it has been since that first nanosecond in history. Quantum mechanics describes the laws that govern the physics of subatomic particles, how they behave. At the quantum level, Newton's laws break down. In our experience, objects obey very strict physical laws of motion and velocity. But in the quantum realm, a particle cannot be said to be in any particular place until it is actually observed. The best we can do is assign it a probability of being at any given point at any given time. Therefore, every particle has a chance of being anywhere at any time, or everywhere at the same time. Pretty complicated, even for some of the smartest people on the planet. In fact, one scientist completely abandoned quantum mechanics after contributing to its inception. Perhaps you've heard of him. You want me to say something about my theories? Einstein is really special because he really did everything by himself on a, on a problem which other people were even scared to try to attack. We, we all work with, with Dr. Einstein. He's my good friend in a sense because the, the accelerators would not work without Einstein. In fact, I experience Einstein every day. It's become so natural that I, I, I'm not even shocked anymore by these concepts. At the end of the 19th century, the physics community thought it had basically figured it all out. We understood gravity, we understood light, electromagnetism. It was almost all complete, there's just a few calculations left to do. And then Einstein throws a huge wrench into it and gives us relativity, says things move through time differently if they're moving relative to each other. And of course, he gave us arguably the most famous equation ever written, which basically states the amazing truth that energy and mass are different forms of the same thing. There are a number of ways you could use Einstein's equation E equals mc squared. One of them is you can build a power station, you take a tiny bit of m, mass, and you get the energy out of it, and you power a city. Uh, what we're doing is, is doing that process in reverse. He came up with some of the most dramatic developments in physical theory in 300 years, he created the birth of quantum mechanics. And then, of course, he would make teenage girls faint. I can't explain that, but uh, he was bigger than Elvis. And he was a very good-looking man as well. Some people have fears that the LHC might produce something dangerous. Um, we're going to create black holes that are going to destroy the universe. <laughs> Or maybe the LHC could be used as a weapon or something. No, we're not building a bomb here. There is no sort of weapons building. It requires 17 miles of real estate in order to actually produce a beam of that strength. Not very practical. However, it is practical in producing cutting-edge science. And the hope for the LHC is we'll see things that we've never seen before and we'll understand things that we haven't understood until now.